Hello everyone, my name is Notepad, and on a Night Ride Games for Fun, so what are we doing today? Well, today we're going to be working on the Midnight Anima, and... Uh, hello! Uh, from last time, few, few things got done. Not many things, but a few things. Uh, let me see if we go down here. Said said we go down... We go down here, I say... Okay. Weird. Uh, yeah, here are all of the class skills kind of transferred over. I went over, like, what open skills are. I went over the basic skills. And then it was like, here are the class skills. Uh, bandit, entertainer, hadaka, mage, martial artist, merchant, priest, ranger, shaman, thief, and warrior. Uh, generally speaking, I changed a few things just when it came to terminology more than anything. Also, you can see, these are all very accurate. And then you have this, the merchant from Dragon Quest. Uh, the reason why that's the case is because you try to find a fucking, you know, anything with that. It just isn't, that's just not a thing. Just not a thing. It was that or porn. Like, there was literally nothing else to work with here. So, cut me some fucking slack here. Give me, give me a little bit to, to work with here. Let me open up my, my drink I got. Uh, probably today is going to be a little bit of a longer stream. But I need to get a lot of shit done. Confessor, my beloved. Is that a lolly? No, that is a fully grown adult. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, I did make a sample character. This is Emberin, the Lightning Shaman, who, if you you are a you are a true Kino you know appreciator if you know where this is from, uh, but Emrin rolled rolled his dice and rolled a fucking four for his resilience, a four for his resilience, um, which is almost the lowest you physically can roll. But he did roll a third a double sixes on fucking style with a plus one, giving him thirteen style. He is all swag, nothing else. Um, generally speaking, he has pretty awful health. He only has 8 HP, which is pretty fucking bad. Uh, he has 6 focus points and a physical defense of 2 and a magical defense of 3. He's a glass cannon. Uh, going after all of the skills, I did do some notes. Uh, when it, mostly when it comes to this and like why this was sap magic. Here's the handle animals. Then it was downgraded to handling in the Duchan version. So it's handling. Uh, yeah, just some just some notes. Uh, let's see, where was the other one? Yeah, so the big thing I did was add the open standard and then open all. Pretty much everyone has open standard most of the time. As you can kind of see here. Open all, there's only one who has open all, which is the Hadaka, which means that he can invest in special skills. That's literally it. Is this a notepad must die? No, it is not a notepad must die. Because I don't, he like, here's the thing. I don't know if it's gonna, this is gonna be a long time or it's not gonna be very long at all. I genuinely do not know. Um... Well, it's because my neighbor keeps fucking spamming out shit through her speakers. I can only assume it's a her. Uh, so, I might just get annoyed and <laughs> need to leave at one point. So, Elden Ring art for a Dark Souls game. Yeah, Elden Ring art for a Dark Souls game. You want to know why? Because there are full images here. These are pretty easy to come across. Yeah, like, the like this is from Dark Souls. Like the, This is actually not easy to get. A lot of these just don't work, and we also have, uh, Smug Guts. Uh, generally speaking, a Shaman actually gets a lot of his stuff right off the bat. Hence why I invested a lot into various weapons and things for him. His best skill, technically outside of being memories, is actually Monster Lore and Spirit Magic. Those are his top- nothing else is above 50. <laughs> Barely anything's above 40 for him. <laughs> So yeah, it, it kind of proved to me at least, like, things like the Shaman feel like they have a lot of skills, but there are a lot of, like, lower skills, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. The only one that I'm, like, a little bit concerned about are things like the Merchant. 
and like the mage especially this because you can have 200 skill points in technically any of your mage abilities but i wanted to do that because i'm like yeah of course you can invest it that's your one fucking job now i do have talents talents are in place however i've written five of them just for the bandit and there's a there is a reason for this is i need to do the phase system to make sure that the this system works because you need to put in the mechanics first for them to actually modify the mechanics so i'm doing that to save myself some headache so now we're here this is my life now People are posting Monty Cook artwork. Why are you all posting Monty Cook artwork? Why? Monty Cook doesn't deserve any of this. Why are we here just to suffer every day? I straight we. All right, so the phase system. Now, generally speaking, I'm going to break down the most play into about five phases. There's going to be the introduction phase. Pretty standard stuff. This isn't something that we should. Yeah, we're going to have the adventure phase. This is the, I think that like the, like these ones, like adventure phase is going to be like pretty common. Like it's going to be the adventure, the combat phase. We're going to have the climax phase as well down here is kind of the fifth one. And the other one we're going to have, I don't really know what to call it. So I've been calling it the rest phase in my head. But yeah, these are going to be the, the five main phases. Introduction is introducing people is introducing the scenario because again we have to think japanese rpg japanese rpgs don't usually have like here's just this grand deal pot no that's not the case we want to make this pretty simple we want to make this to the point that's the goal that's the entire thing it's a shame notepad doesn't have more followers yeah it is a shame i don't have more followers Get more cult, get more cult members to join the asylum. That's all I gotta say. And when you do niche content of a niche content, you don't get much. Now, adventure phase is pretty simple. This is the doing things phase. This is the literal anything that isn't combat phase is the adventure phase, pretty much. And it is. Hey, we're traveling across an area. It's the adventure phase. Hey, we're doing the... It's the adventure phase. That's literally all it is. Very common in JRPGs. Because uh, when you will grow, you will explode an autism. and you'll be nuked someday. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I, I was musing with somebody the other day because I found out that people have actually been playing Monster Girl Adventures... Like, there's, there's been at least one confirmed full campaign of Monster Girl Adventures, and they want to start a second one. And <laughs> I was musing with the guy who told me about it. And we, it, it, like, what happens when you get famous and, like, you actually do get picked up by a company? And I told him outright, and I'm not memeing when I say this either, being like, I will delete everything. Everything will go away about me, the per me, the human being. You will get the most like bare minimum stuff about me, but like, there there will be uh, there will be nothing. I will be Juan Lopez from Santa Rosa. I will be a Californio. It'll be great. One day, spam him at the normies. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I actually find things to be, like, I try to keep things pretty PG, like, relatively speaking. I'm not, like, a gamer or whatever. Like, I, like, I'm not, like, someone who's, like, really active, like, trying to start shit with people. I, I don't. I've, I've gone into a few arguments on Twitter before, but it's mostly out of, like, genuine frustration with some of the fucking Twitter people. I hate TTRPG Twitter. All of them belong on the cross. Every single one of them. Uh, but generally speaking, I try to keep things relatively PG. I am a family-friendly streamer, I'll have you all know. And you better not fucking forget it. 
say, Twitch, just just give me the ability to actually set an age rating. That's all it is. That's why children won't get involved in here. I hate Twitter. Twi Twitter is Twitter is Twitter. Like, like Twitter sucks. Like, I don't think people quite understand. Twitter sucks. There's nothing productive on Twitter. I think people have a bad tendency of thinking like, oh, well, this is like the, the main, it's not. Twitter just sucks. Now, also, here's the, here's the beautiful thing about the adventure phase and the combat phase. This is something I actually, fairly important. Combat phase is ultimately just going to be a structured piece of the adventure phase. That's literally all it's going to be. It is, you have a sword, you are attacking, but instead of saying like very binary success and failure, you're going to have a little bit more act things actually happening. And there are going, there's going to be a little bit more, hey, you're in the front row, you're in the back row. It's pretty much just adventure phase, but more. Uh, rest phase is literally just the rest phase. You're just going to, it's you taking a break. You don't get many of these. Take a break, relax, get your health back, get your focus points back, and generally, you know, don't die. And finally, the climax phase is which we're, we're going to call it, you know, the big bo the big boss, the big boss fight. Pretty much that. Uh, let's see, TG is the best play. No, TG sucks. Like, being objective here. Like, TG... Like, this is coming from someone who is a fat guy. I like TG. TG is, some, is pretty good when it works. Most of the time, like, 95% of this shit, it sucks. Can we have a world building? No, we cannot have a fucking world building board. It'll never work. It's like, oh, well, here's, like, the loot RPG general, which I, I need to go over because some of their games really suck. And... If they they keep deluding themselves, that's fine. It's not fine. It's like, oh, here's chapters. Here's, like, it's... Uh, uh. I have a complicated history with you, TG. You can't... Yeah, you, you are an odd duck. Let's see, is there anything on the obscure... Obscure thread? No, nothing much. It'll actually fall off, finally. It's... Reddit... I will say this about Reddit. Reddit is fine when Reddit stays on topic. I think I think that's like a big thing. Like you can actually get like genuinely interesting conversations on Reddit sometimes when it's something really focused. Anything bigger, like our RPG sucks. But it's like, oh, this is our really specific game if it's like a really specific game with like a hundred people in it then it's actually redeemable anything larger than that it sucks let's see do i even have a reddit do i even have a reddit account let's actually see we're going on reddit everybody yeah reddit <laughs> i don't even have a reddit account let, let, See, I also just fucking hate Reddit. Like, I don't like Reddit. Oh my god. No, R. No, we want to do RRPG. Weird lit. Uh. No, not weird lit. We're looking for moderators. You should make me a moderator. Like, yeah, like nothing is good here. See, here's the thing. You see this 1.5 million people, nothing of fucking value happens here. This is an awful, awful place and you shouldn't go here. Uh, in like just pure objective reality, you should never go here. Um, I did find actually, the other day I was looking at some stuff and I did find this. This is Way of Steel. This is actually pretty productive. I, this was pretty good. There's actually some good, interesting things that I could find on this. This is a very specific little tabletop game that I found, which is going to be added on to another case. I actually spoke with the main developer guy. Pretty nice dude. Really passionate. Like, that's the extent of it. A lot in RPGs being self-righteous. Yeah, pretty much. It's... 
There's like our RPG. You have the issue of like in any in any sized Reddit. I'll give you this is this is the secret. I'll give you all a little nasty little secret here. In any size community, you end up with a situation of you end up with purity tests. Now, who knows what a purity test is? You've probably heard of the phrase before. All a purity test is, is do you follow the line? Do you tow the line? Reddit rewards you for towing the line. You are rewarded to do, for thinking like everybody else. You are punished for not thinking like everybody else. So you end up in this weird bit of hive mind with larger groups of people where if you aren't perfect, you are banned and nothing and nothing good happens. Because like one bad post, one bad post can like fuck your day up. Because you're stopped being priority and people stop treating you seriously because you don't have 50 million karma. Saying the n-word on R4chan gets you Reddit gold. Well, yeah, exactly. But there's also things like our rape like Reddit. People don't talk about some of the weird shit on Reddit. There's a lot of weird Reddits out there. And people are like, 4chan is scary and full of weirdos. No, Reddit's full of fucking weirdos. You find goblinoids in there. Like, you just find inhuman monsters in there. Because they can hide among each other really easily. That's where you can find, like, fucking map groups. Like, no. Like, that, no. It's like... And Reddit's like, well, you're a community, you can do whatever you want. Fuck off, Reddit. Like, fuck off. Again, I give 4chan credit. 4chan isn't perfect. Ever since Hiroshi Moot kind of took over, things have been a little bit weird. Uh, <laughs> it's... But I, I will say this, it polices itself pretty well. You can't post porn on a blue board, you will get swacked. People sometimes can get away with a lot of stuff. TG especially, I will say that, TG can get away from things pretty easily. And... <laughs> like, you can get away with things on TG pretty damn easily, very simply by just saying, in my setting. Because nobody, nobody wants to be the guy to pull the trigger. That's the big thing with, P with TG, and that's like one of the big issues with TG. Which is, nobody wants to pull the trigger because uh, that's what happened with quests. Quests were handled poorly. I will be the first one to say, quests were handled extremely poorly when they went the way of the fucking dodo. That's like a big issue with them. And I think that's kind of like a, why they have not cracked down on more things regarding some of the TG uh, lack of quality, as people would say. It's simply because nobody wants another... Nobody wants another uh, quest issue. Nobody wants that, because quest stuff was awful. But, you know... Uh, let's see. Actually, what, what, what's quest doing? That was quest. I remember when Quest got its own board, everyone got really pissed. But like I've always been fascinated in quests. Here's the thing. I've always been perpetually fascinated in them. Cause I don't get how anybody could ever like it. That's the thing. I do not get a single person who's like, this is fine. I love this. This is awesome. I don't get it. Never have. Never have once have I got, like, why people love quests. I always thought it was really weird. <laughs> let's see. Is there any... Is there anything of value here? Let, let's let's check. No, I'm not... I'm not seeing anything really... Really good here. <laughs> oh, there's the girl... Girls und Panzer. <laughs> you want Goop Quest? Oh god, there's a Twitter for Goop Quest, everybody. What shall we do? 
Look. I'm Oh, sweet Jesus. I never under there was I will say this though I will say that there was a single quest that I was invested in <laughs> the the single quest I was interested in was let me see if I can find it uh nerve can I find it yes here it is no, didn't mean to didn't mean to click that button. I need to click this. This was Nerve Bridge Simulator. I was fascinated in Nerve Bridge Simulator because the guy did a bunch of artwork like this the entire time. And I thought it was super cool and things actually made sense because like the way he was kind of distributing things made a lot of sense. Uh we also got Fucking the third child. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Well, I think like that, like, and you, you can see his artwork improving. I liked it. That was fun. I had a good time with that. But. How do, you, how do you how do you even become a Jan? Well, okay, four chan Jannies. Um, here's the thing with them: you have you apply, and by apply, you you get, don't get paid anything. Uh, you pretty much apply to that, and they review. You get selected, and you your job is to pretty much you know pay it. You pay, paid nothing effectively. Well, actually, I take that back. What you are technically paid in is mod privileges, in which you can kind of curate the the nature of the discussion, which people actually. Here's the thing. That is a very important thing. Like, pe people make fun of it, be like, "I'm a Reddit moderator or whatever." Well, I'm very important. Like, no, being able to actually, you know move the way of discussion it's great <sighs> oh none of you are actually mods i have no moderators uh let's see Uh, Midnight Anima. Let's <laughs> again, you, again, I, I've been debating on implementing the Jabberwocky system. That that'll be that has been my 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 one thing. The Jabberwock system. It's great. Uh, let's see. I mean, uh, it's broken down to a series of phases, each with a particular goal. Each with a particular goal to. Yeah, the Jabberwocky system. Well, here's the thing with the Jabberwocky system. It was a very simple idea. I give one random person mod powers. However, if anyone can claim, if anyone successfully guesses who that moderator is, they get the moderator powers. It's a perpetual state of gaslighting everybody. That's the that would be the plan. It's a it's a permanent state of guessing who everybody is. 
so it's impossible to tell who the real moderators are. So everyone is, acts on their best behavior. <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. The mod cannot speak. He cannot say that he is a mod, or he'll lose his mod privileges. Thus, someone will call him out on it. Thus, you end up in a situation... <laughs> Oh, Twitch moderators? No, it'd be entirely server side. Twitch moderators, I just turn up auto mod to nothing, to extreme. I just turn up, you know, it to extremes. That or I just turn on the magic button. <laughs> See, if I turn on that magic button, nobody can speak. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> It's great. Let's see. Each phase has a series of... Well, here, you can speak during sub only. You can only, you can speak during subscribers only mode if you pay up. <laughs> Remember, I am a mercenary. You pay, I will. You know, you do get rights the more you pay. Thank you very much to all of the plutocrats. He can't keep get he can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> so each phase has a series of goals to complete. Five dollar wine tastes like ass, and you damn well know it. Says a man who worked at a fucking winery or a little tap house, but ugh. Let's see, uh, each phase of series of gold will complete will chip the adventure as an unfold. Well, I worked at a tap house, which the tap house served exclusively wine because it was a tap house owned by a winery, which. That was a that was a fun thing. I hated my team because we we were we're working as a project together, and I fucking hate my team. They, they were bastards. Hated every single one of them, but we got it done. Learned a lot. Learned that I can't trust any literally any other human being is just untrustworthy and should not be trusted around anything which you should be able to do and control with absolute precision. Ni hao wo ya hung xing ni na senpai. Nope, are you Chinese? Uh, wo ya hung gao xing ni na. No. I'm American as apple pie. Being on it, uh. I'm not a Japanese spy. I'm not any spy. <laughs> Seeing Chinese and black people can't be Americans? <laughs> no. Yeah, don't you know, gamers, I'm based in Red Pill. This should be known. This should be known. Uh, introduction phase, introduce it. Uh, introduction phase has each of the brand introduce themselves as well as have the dungeon keeper.
Auto mod. Auto mod. I'm going to say this right now. He's making a Mortal Kombat reference. No. Though, fun fact I did know clan members. Welcome to, li welcome to living in North Idaho. Uh, does struggle against monsters or foes? Monsters or foes? Uh, you keep doing that. Uh, fine one. The clan guys I knew. Uh, yeah, they were pretty nice. They just didn't like black people very much. It's... The thing with the clan, and I think people have a bad tendency with this, is people think the clan are, like, comically evil. They are not. They are... The thing with the clan most of the time is that they are... I don't want to word this. I'm going to say, well, they're misunderstood. No, they're assholes. Like, they're fucking super racists. However, the big thing with the clan nowadays is that they are not what they were. It's family stuff at this point. Like, half the guys barely even believed it, but it was like, my dad was part of the clan. There, I am part of the clan. It's, it is literally 50% boomers and 50% guys our age. Guys in their fucking 20s thinking they're really cool because they they can say the N-word. <laughs> Notepad defend the clad and post it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, no, again, it's they're it's literally boomers and, and LARPers. That's all it is anymore. We're f and like, I don't think anyone... <laughs> and the thing is, I don't think anyone will back me. People will back me up on that. Again, it's boomers and LARPers. I don't like either of them, but I understand why. They're, again, they don't like the clan. Doesn't mean I can't understand like why they exist. And all I have to say there, Mr. Ironside, is why are you here, you alt-right troll? <laughs> See, if this was, like, 40 years ago, then, yeah, I would be that. See, here's the thing. If I had if I had to make a decision between, you know, living next to fucking neo-Nazis and the clan, I'd choose the clan. Mostly, like, they're, <laughs> they're, mo they're assholes, but they are harmless. <laughs> yeah, neo-Nazis are fucking... Ugh, God, I hate neo-Nazis. Mostly because they all are fucking Hearts of Iron 4 players, every single one of them. Uh, let's see. God, you don't understand. I did a little dark age. Look, he tried to get black shunts. Like, snap the fuck up. Neo Nazis are annoying. There's not a single good neo Nazi. They are all the most annoying human beings available. That's why I find it hilarious. Everyone's like, yeah, Slava Ukraine, Slava Ukraine, with the fucking Azov battalions right there. I find it hilarious. Like, <laughs> uh, let's see, the brand face uh, the scenario is demon and pitched battle. I know we're not, I know I'm, we're supposed to support Ukraine and I, I get it. You know, it's just like, yeah, struggle and all that. But I'm like, guys. Guys, they have a black sun on. It. Uh, we're not supposed to like. We're Couldn't you Nazis a dead Nazi? I just find them annoying. No. 
We can't say that. That's a no-no. Okay, so we want to break this down. We're going to do the introduction phase first. Introduction phase. Uh, at the start of, at the start of, at the start of the game, all players. Uh, let's see. At the start of the game, at the start of the game, all players will have their branded ready to go. Have their ready to go and ready to go and play. The dungeon keeper. The dungeon keeper will present will present the, the initial information. Will present the initial information of the scenario. Of the scenario, as well as call for a series of memory checks. Of memories. Uh let's see. A series of memories. Actually, a memory. Memory checks. We're going to put a uh, memory skill. Uh, memory checks. If the if the branded. Uh, then they will auto succeed. Auto succeed and no, they will auto succeed and know why they are there. At, know why they are there. Veteran character, uh, veteran branded will roll. The veteran branded will roll, and if they succeed, and if they succeed, they will have, they will, they will know, know and be able to explain the reason, uh, the reason they are confronting, confronting the demon in question. Demon in question. If they, if they fail, if they fail. They don't quite remember. They don't quite remember. Be it, uh, be it, the, they don't quite remember. And the and the and the dungeon keeper will introduce. And the dungeon keeper will introduce a hectic relationship, hectic relationship with the demon or the, their subordinates. So. Now the idea what this is. Every character is going to have memory skill at 100 to start with. Every time you die, what's going to happen is that you're going to take your 2d6 and you're going to roll. Now, well, normally what's going to happen is you're going to be able to compare these dice and say, okay, I can either select my first attribute and decrease it by 5, or my fifth attribute and decrease it by 1. Alright, pretty easy. I've died, I've come back to life immediately. However, Every time you die, you're also going to reduce your memory skill by that much. So, I rolled a 5 and a 6. I rolled a 5 and a 1, I mean. I'm going to reduce my memory by 6. I've lost that much memory. Now, at the beginning of a, at the beginning of a scenario, you're going to roll your dice, and it's like, Oh no, I rolled a 96. I failed. I failed my memory check. You don't actually know why you're quite there. It's almost kind of ethereal in the nature of you stumbling across this. Maybe you're here, but you don't quite remember why you're here or why you were so invested in coming here. Others can inform you that, like, well, we're here together because we need to slay the beast. But you, it's like a little memory hole. You don't quite remember it. You don't know why. But that gives the GM opportunity to fuck you up and make your life miserable. Because that's funny. Um, because I'm a terrible human being and I can do that. Uh, let's see, let's start the game out. Uh, the See, during the introduction phase, during the introduction phase, the hub, I don't want to say this, yeah, we'll call it the hub, is introduced as well. Uh, the hub is a location which allows, let's see, the hub is a location which allows the party, which allows the Brandon, Brandon to rest, recuperate, Recuperate and purchase supplies. And purchase supplies should they need it. 
it's always simple to go back to the back to the hub regardless regardless of how far along the adventure the the branded are however returning to the original place however returning to the however returning to the original point the uh, point may prove difficult may prove difficult you can always go back that's the big thing you can always go back to the hub you can always go back to something like Firelink Shrine, for example. You're always going to be able to go back there. That's not complicated. It's not the hard part. The hard part comes in when you're trying to go back and trying to come as trying to go back to where you left from. If you got really fucked up in a fight, like we need to go back, we need to turn back, we need to pick up our friend, we need to save the day. We know we need to actually make sure we don't die immediately. Well. You can. That's easy. But going back is where things get hard. Uh, during the introduction phase, hub is introduced as well. Hub is location. Uh, in uh, the dungeon keeper. Will uh. Also explain. That's a terrible edit. That's a terrible fucking edit. Zero out of ten. Uh, the dungeon keeper will also explain. See, the dungeon keeper will also explain. All right, introduction phase is really simple. It is quite literally the introduction phase. You introduce everybody, including the hub. Now the hub is going to be like, again, it's something like Firelink Shrine. You will always be able to go back there. This is your home base. Everybody loves Firelink Shrine because Firelink Shrine is the thing that you know is safe. Regardless of what you do, Firelink Shrine is safe. Hello, hello canine. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, you will always be okay there. Hence why I feel like it's relatively important to actually put in. So we're going to do then the adventure phase. The adventure, the adventure phase. Adventure. So. Face clan, uh, let's see. I might have an answer. Keepsakes? Keepsakes and items? Uh, I need to explain what everyone fucking gets for item-wise. I don't have equipment set up yet. I have an idea for equipment, but it's going to be pretty easy to do. Uh, so how how's the system coming along? Character creation is effectively done. I need to get now the phase system. The phase system is like setting up and like things to what people are actually going to do. This is the core loop. This right here is the core loop of things. This is fairly important. So it's kind of a pretty much how I how I envision this game being played is introduction, adventure. Combat, adventure, and then kind of, kind of that idea of like adventure, combat, adventure, combat, adventure, combat, leading to climax. Obviously, this can get a little bit more confusing and a little bit more messy with mo things like, oh, well, we want to do introduction right into combat, combat, and then adventure, climax, or whatever. That's kind of the idea. But very much a, I wouldn't say linear, but structured. Because, guess what? 
That's what a lot of fucking JRPGs do. So when the brand is set out... Oh, there. We'll need to overcome. Let's see. Let's see, uh... Let's, each adventure phase section will have a... It's a series of challenges that need to be o that need to be overcome. Uh, failing to uh, failing to solve you know, failing to solve the problem failing to solve the problem or being sidetracked uh well I want to work slow progress down and force yeah alternate paths <sighs> I'm gonna deny that one. You know I can't let that through, Ironside. I can get away with a lot of things, but I can't get away with everything. Auto Jandy, clean it up. Yeah, pretty much. Failing to solve the problem of being sidetracked will slope down progress and force the Brandon down alternate paths to succeed. Every step of the way will... Hmm. How do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? Failing should fall on the sidetrack will slow progress down and force the down alternate palace to succeed. Failing to solve the problem of being sidetracked will slow progress down and force the brand down alternate paths to succeed. Uh, actually, regardless of, of success or failure, the uh, the branded will make will make prog will make progress toward or the demon. However, however, uh, success or failure result in alternate paths opening up. Opening up and forcing the right to different situations. If the if the branded take too long take too long in an area, take too long in an area, they will roll they will roll a random combat encounter. <laughs> so, uh, how how the adventure phase is going to handle out? It's a really basic way of section of like needing to explain this method but it's very simple the entire idea is let's say for example let's say we have our our demon we like we the objective is simple we need to kill general bog bogdanoff there we go general yeah General, and we need to kill General Bogdanov. There we go. We need to kill the Bogdanov brothers again. We've killed them. They died once, but that won't stop them this time. Yeah, we need to kill General Bogdanov. However, the first, like, and the hub, for example, may be uh, the refugee camp. Actually, we'll say the hidden refugee camp. We know there. That's the hub. 
Our first adventure phase may be sneak past the guards. You know, that might be that might be our fraction we can even call it, which is um, trek through the battlefield. Because there's a giant battlefield full of gore. Now, if we succeed, well, we can say like this is going to be like a traversal check. You know, a traversal check, and there might be a scavenging check along the way. Pretty much it's you doing your fucking job as a GM and setting up things. But we need to trek through this battlefield. We need to do a traversal check, a scavenging check, and just to generally get through this. If we succeed, you know, we're going to hit the next phase of this. You know, we're going to hit the next step, you could say. It's like we're going to move on through, find the, you know, we need to find the you know, find the war camp that's going to be our next objective however if we fail it's we need to may if we fail like generally speaking like if we can't really trek through this battlefield well we just keep getting bogged down and turned around and lost because it's full of gore and death we may have to do a different goal our goal may be to now like trek through trek through the swamps because we're going around. We got turned around and now we're in a shitty swamp. You know, and now we have to kind of move around to get to the boss, to get to the camp. Everything is always leading to the boss. Everything will always lead you to the boss. It's just a matter of how it's actually done. Because if you keep failing or you keep succeeding in right ways, you may go down a track that puts you on a very different way of approaching things. But you, that might be advantageous. That may not be advantageous. It's kind of the do your fucking job, GM. A uh, question is mainly a dungeon crawler. No, but yes. Um, here's the here, here's the 411 here, kids. Um, most JTRPGs are actually very structured. Overly so. Uh, here I'll cite. Uh, let me let me bring up my. Let me let me see if I can't think of a good one at the top of my head. Ah, oh, I know which one will we'll look. Like for example, actually no, this is a bad one. Uh, where's a good one? I'm trying to think of that, of course, because... Ah. This is Sheena Begami. Now. Sheena Begami is broken down into a very clear set of phases. You will do things in the correct phase. If you do not do things in the correct phase, you're not... Yeah. It's... Here is the climax phase like it's a very standardized way of doing things and these are almost outright like you have to create your own character in a very particular way because of this uh let me see if i can find the exact Ilya. yeah introduction master scenes Climax scene. That's it. That's how you play Shinobigami. Shinobigami is a very strange game simply because it is a very structured game. You don't really do anything outside of what it exactly wants you to do. You special summon that card in main phase too. Well, and here's the thing. Here's the beautiful thing. You can do whatever the fuck you want with this. I don't really care. Because uh, what this is, is a fairly standard way of doing things. But I needed to think a very different way. And you may be wondering, where where in the fucking, you know, life, where, where, where does this come from? Well, you gotta think about it like this. You have... There we go. Right here. This is pretty much like kind of where I'm putting it is in the second edition. You're 30. Now, I want you to picture this. 
Close your eyes here for a moment. Close your eyes here for a moment for me, everybody. You're 32 years old. You work a nine to five. You have the weekend to get with your friends in a karaoke bar to play something. You can't stay there for six hours, but that's going to cost everybody about 40 bucks. You can also stay there for three hours and probably be set back only about 20 max. You're going to make things for 20. You're going to make things for that lower amount of time. And that's kind of where I'm basing it off of. It's the idea more along the lines of this is a very Japanese game. Thus, we have to assume that you have to be able to play this game in three hours. Thespianism? Go for it. You can be a thespian all you want. But you're going to, when you complete phase, this phase, we're moving on to the next phase. Turn off your eyes when I'm talking about something like that. I'm like, yeah. No, but it's like a very clear, like, if you want to, you can. Because again, this isn't a real game. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? It's great making a game that makes me out to be a fucking schizophrenic. Turn up, just turn off your eyes, bro. Let's see. Uh, I take too long. To, there were a random combat encounter. They take a random combat encounter. Actually, I'm. How do I want to do this? See. See, the thing is, if I wanted to be a very, if I want to keep fairly J JTRPG, if I want to keep fairly JTRPG, what do I do is add a cycle system, which the idea would be the lo like the longer you take, the longer you take, the stronger the boss gets. So, for example, let's say we have a seven phase. Let's say there's seven phases. Let's just say, for example, seven phases. Each phase has three cycles minimum, which that's three attempts to make the check, to pass the thing, kind of the basic idea. After X amount, of, you know, after X cycles, you're going to get a random combat encounter, which is, again, just going to be a random fucking combat encounter, but after X plus, X plus Y cycles, the uh, boss gets stronger. Now, that is complete fucking s s madness, but that is an option that we can employ because we're insane and we can do that. So, hub, adventure, check through the battlefield. I do still play Heroes of the Storm. Oh, we have a lot of fun playing hay rounds because it is fun. We, I enjoy having fun. Uh, Brent, the climax phase of the Brent face the dictionary's demon pitch battle, the adventure fails. Take too long in an area, they will roll a random combat encounter. Let's see. Let's actually make a chart here real fast. We'll insert a what is there, small table, nothing too big. We'll make a two B two D six uh combat strength. Combat strength, combat strength. We do that random chop. Uh, that'll be two to we'll say two to four. Actually, we'll say two to three. No combat. Four to we'll say four to seven, which will be easy combat. Eight to 
eight two would be a good one. Eight two. Then we do that. Then we do three to six. Seven to eight. So seven to ten. That would be three. Three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. That's four. Now we need to make that a little bit tighter. So that would be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three, four, five. Okay. Actually, we can even. There we go. Yeah, wandering monsters are just going to be able to find you and probably fucking kill you. Just fuck you. Roll a 7, that would be a medium combat. Roll a 9, that would be a hard combat. Roll a 10, hard combat. It would be a medium combat. So you're going to average out about the medium combats. Very rarely you're going to get an easy one. Yeah. Uh, shift immediately into the combat phase. Now combat phase. This is where things are going to get a little bit hectic. So. Combat phase. Uh, the, the branded have found themselves. Themselves in, in a battle with... The enemy. With the enemy. Uh, each side is arranged, actually, arrayed in a quote line, which indicate which indicates the relative positions of both sides being on op opposite sides of opposite sides of the field. There's a front line and a back line. There's a front line and back line for both the enemy, for both, actually, both the branded and the enemy. Uh, if I can fucking spell enemy. So your combatants in the front line, they can be targeted by both melee and range attack, while in the back line, well, in the back line, they can, they can only be targeted by ranged attacks, by ranged attacks. Actually, uh... One side will emerge victorious. Each side is a regular line, which indicates the relative positions of both sides on being opposite sides of the field. Uh, there's a front line and a back line for both the branded and the enemy. Uh, actually, we can probably do... What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Combatants is in the front line, they can be targeted by both melee and range, while in the back line, they can all be targeted by range attacks. Uh, if there are, if there are no, there are no combatants in the front line, in the front line, in the front line, all of the back line, all the back line. All the backline combatants will move will move to become will become the front the new front line. Uh, the new front line. So basic idea is simple. There is the front line. Actually, I just need to make this simpler because there is the front line and there is there is the back line. Not exactly the most complicated thing in the world. However, if your front line is gone, all the people in the back line now become 
frontliners. Simple as. Uh, if there are no combatants in the front line, all the backline combatants will, have, will move to become the new front line. Uh, actually, combatants in the back uh, combatants in the back line cannot use melee attacks. Cannot use melee attacks. However, however, being restricted to range to ranged attacks. So you have to use ranged attacks. If you do not have ranged attacks, you cannot do that. No combats in the front line, all the back line combats will move to become the new front line. Uh, there is a, th a third line. There is a third line behind uh behind the back line behind the back line. This is called the retreat zone. Uh, called the retreat zone. When a actually when a combatant when a combatant moves to the retreat to the retreat zone retreat zone at the end at the end of their turn at the end of their end of the round they they will leave the bat they will leave the battle in the round they will leave the battle having run away having run away if the if there is if there is no front front line or back line front line or back line uh, the actually if there is no back line hello phone if there is no back line then the uh, then the retreat zone zone is moved to the back line. This is like the system the fan made Dark Souls RPG uses. To a degree, yeah. Fire's far away it was I, I did cite that slightly. Not much, but it is there. Pretty much the like the idea behind this is to use the uh kind of like the Dragon Quest method of doing things. So you have a very much a clear like frontline backline. And you want something like two characters in the front and like two characters in the back defend to be defended and you're fighting and we need to do our job because that's what we do. And we're, we're fighting for the sake of fighting and that's how it kind of works out. The only gimmick being that if you have a front line, a back line, only one person may be able to run away. Hence, you know, it's kind of like it's okay to have like a rear guard even kind of sacrificed to get to make sure that somebody gets away. So if there's no back line, then the retreat zone is moved to the back line. Uh, initiative, initiative system, initiative. Now we are using Dragon Quest system. We're using Dragon Quest initiative. Now for anyone who plays Dragon Quest, this should be fucking horrifying. So have fun, everybody. So, um, so at the at the start of the com actually at the start of the combat phase, combat phase. All combatants, all combat, actually, um, all of the branded, all of the branded will roll their, will roll their initiative value, well, their initiative value for the turn. They will roll, they will roll 2d6, plus, they will roll 2d6, and if we're really looking at it, if I remember correctly, we'll do Dragon Quest... Dragon Quest Initiative. Now let me see if I can remember. Because it's re-rolled at the start of every single turn. That's one of the big things, and I need to double check the fucking math behind it. What's the math?
because there's I literally re-rolls it every single turn, tar, turn, which is AIDS. If I remember correctly, I remember seeing the math somewhere. It is based off your agility, it's pretty much based off your agility stat plus a die roll. So, let, let's just say like XD20. So, you may have, for example, an agility, you may have like an agility stat of let's say like 15. Let, 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 let's just call it simple, let's say like an agility stat of 15. At the start of every turn, you're going to roll that 1D20. And that's going to determine your actual position in the fight. So you could roll a one and have a you know have a sixteen. No, I don't know that initiative system. Please do tell. Uh, I haven't really been able to find anything on that one. Or you may end up with a thirty-five. That's the secret. But let's say you rolled a seventeen. Let's just let's just let's just say you got a seventeen as your final one. You rolled a fucking two on your d twenty. The enemy may do the same thing, but they have like a ten, you know, plus one d twenty. But they might get, you know times three because they get three attacks so they might end up with a 12 a 15 a 14 and a 16 you know and uh in you know like a 22 and they're gonna re-roll this every single time that's why people can get a little bit frustrated with this but what we're gonna be doing is the exact same thing pretty much so all random roll their initiative value for the turn they will roll 2d6 plus agility Actually, you do roll agility plus 2d6. Plus 2d... Actually, your agility is going to be about 8 consistently. Yeah, that works. I think that works. Because at most... Let's see. On average, you're going to have about 7. So that's going to be 7 plus 2d6. So it's going to be about 9 to 12 plus 7 is... If I can do my fucking math correctly, 19. So yeah, that works... Uh, yeah, that works pretty well. I think that's gonna... No, that'll be fine. Uh, they will roll the Jilly plus 2d6. Uh, to determine... Their... Wow, that sounds fucking atrocious. Glad I'm not doing that. I'm just doing the worst possible way to do initiative ever. Because I said I would. Uh, and we're, we're keeping thematic. Remember that. Uh, they will roll agility plus 2d6 to determine their position in the initiative track. So, for for everyone at home watching in, the D, you know the Dark Souls, you know the official official Dark Souls JTRPG. Their initiative is everyone you know rolls initiative highest axe but then everyone rolls initiative highest axe rolls initiative ever highest axe that's kind of the idea uh what's the point can modifiers change no you're gonna be rolling agility plus 2d6 that's what you're going to be rolling. However, the big thing is, when you die, you die, you lose attributes. Do you see an issue here? <laughs> now, mind you, I specifically state the branded roll. This is, this, is the key, this is the key thing I want you to remember. The branded roll. Not enemies. Ooh, excuse me. Enemies have a set initiative value for all of their attacks, and they're going to do their attacks in a very particular fashion. Because fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Uh, determine their position on the initiative. They will roll agility plus 2d6 to determine their position on the initiative track. Uh, the higher the... In uh... Uh, once deter once deter once determined the the combatant combatant with the highest with the highest initiative value the highest initiative value will act will act first and then descend 
and then descend. Uh, enemy, enemies and demon, uh, enemies and demons do not, do not roll initiative. Uh, enemies and demons do not roll initiative. They instead have a set initiative, initiative for all of the, all of their attacks in which they will select, in which they will select, uh, let's see, for all of their attacks, attacks they will perform, they'll perform in that turn, they'll perform in that turn. So, how this system's working, the idea is, let's say, the Skeleton Knight, Skeleton Knight is going to act on 10, and he's going to do, he's going to attack you, he is going to attack with his sword, he's going to do a sword, sword attack, sword, he's going to do a sword attack, and he's going to do a sword attack that's going to do 46 damage. You roll, and you score, an initiative, and you scored your official initiative at 12. You... You're going to act first. Uh, you know, you're going to act first. You're going to do something before the Skeleton Knight is even going to act. However, oh no, player two rolled an eight. So he's going second. Combo comes around, comes around again. Now, next turn, the Skeleton Knight is going to continue to do the sword attack. And because he's going to continue doing the sword attack, let's say player, you know, player rolled a 15. So he's going to act first and player two, two, you know, player two rolled a 12, rolled a 13. He's going to do fine. They're going to act before him. He's never going to change his initiative value. You're going to change your initiative value. And you're going to re-roll that every single turn. Sometimes it's just going to go slower and that's fine. Uh, enemies zoom and don't roll initiative. They instead of a set initiative for all the attacks they will perform in that turn. Mega monsters might have that, but nothing else. Uh, perform in that turn. Uh, demonic enemy. Uh, demonic enemies. They have a selection of attacks. Uh, may have a selection of attacks that they, they may pick and choose from. A uh, selection of attacks they may pick and choose from, inserting them into each, inserting, inserting them into, uh, individual, individual areas. So, the example, kind of continuing with the idea is, player, you know, player one might be here, you know, have initiative four, have initiative twelve, you know, demon, you know, demon attack one, demon attack one may have initiative 15, demon attack two, two might have a 12, I have a, might have a, I have a, we'll say like a nine, demon attack, demon attack three might have an initiative of four, you know, initiative of three, like, well, they're not going to act very fast, well, the thing is, you, player one, is going to be acting here. So, um, hopefully you're going to have fun trying to dodge these. <laughs> uh, inserting them into in individual... Pl uh, into... Into the initiative track. Okay. Actually, then the send a singular, a singular uh, combatant, combatants turn a single combatants action. Action is their turn. Good night, Iron. 
Uh, let's see. Single combat combatants action is their turn, while the combined while the combined action while the combined turns of all combatants is the round is the round is the round. When the round ends, let's see. When the round ends, when the round ends. All of the branded, all the branded will re-roll their initiative. So if you have a high initiative, you have if you have a high agility, you're going to go consistently ahead of people with a lower agility. But you can also roll a two, and then someone can roll a twelve. Just like there is that chaos factor a little bit, and that also affects things like, hey, for a round, this occurs, and you trigger that at the very beginning of the round at the very end of the last round you're probably going to get that and if you are acting at the first of the round guess what you're at top of the round now and it wears off <laughs> it's great isn't it and all enemies and demons do not roll initiative they instead of a set initiative for their attacks throwing them into the initiative track okay so with all of this so we do combat phase. Combat phase is important. Line combat. Everyone's lined up. Everyone's fighting. Fighting it out. Duking it out. That's the point. Then initiative values. Everyone has the initiative. Okay. So next we let's roll up here real fast. That's why I understand what I need. Okay. So here's where things get a little bit hectic. <laughs> So, uh, action, actions in combat. Actions in combat. When it is, when it is, when it is the branded, when it is the branded's turn, they may choose to, they will, they will perform an action. They'll perform an action. Which is a they'll perform an action, which allows them to to influence influence the battle in a meaningful in a meaningful way. Okay, this one. Uh, bandit who? Okay, actually, let me see. They'll perform it. actually do we give them two actions? I um, yeah, actually when Brennan it is the branded's turn, they will perform two actions. They'll perform two actions, which allow granting them the ability to perform perform a meaning a meaningful. They'll perform two action two actions. They may perf they may perform the same action twice, allowing them to string together attacks. Uh, string together strikes, or or bravely or bravely advance in the wrong direction, in the other direction. Because yes, you can just book it if you want. If you if you want to book it, just run like hell. You always have that option of burning all of your actions and just running away. <laughs> so, uh, Brandon, they will perform two actions, same action, allowing them to string together strikes or bravely advance in the other direction. Okay, so what's are going to be some of our basic actions? Obviously, we're going to have the we're going to have the we're going to say the physical attack option. And how do we want to write this? Okay. So we're going to do the branded uses an equipped weapon using the equipped weapon to attack, to attack the chosen target. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Brand using a, using an equipped weapon to attack the chosen target. They are, They will roll a skill check. They roll skill check, and if they are successful, if they are successful, they will strike the enemy. 
and dealing damage equal to equal to the weapon. Okay, that's pretty simple. Magic magical attack. The branded uses uh, the branded uses magic uses magic to attack the chosen target. They will let's see they will roll a skill check. They will roll a skill check. Uh, let's see, they will roll a skill check. Really? Let's see. Let's see, uh, use magic to attack the chosen target. They will roll a skill check. A skill check and... And spend one FP. They are successful. They will hit. They will strike the enemy. They'll strike the enemy, dealing, uh, dealing. Their combined roll. Their combined roll. But note, adding, uh, adding the two D ten. Adding the two D ten together. In damage. So, what does this actually mean? So, for example, I want to cast a fireball at you. I want to hit you. I'm going to use magic and hit you. I roll, and I am successful because I have a 60 in there, and I roll a 55. I'm going to do 10 damage. This does mean if you have really low, actually, like, really fucking low attacks, you're not going to do that much damage. If you, let's say if you have 20, and you roll, and you're successful. Let's see. And, hey, I succeeded at casting a spell and hitting you. I'm only going to do 8 damage. Yeah, the sword's going to do a little bit more damage, because the sword's pretty useful. Uh, they'll do that much damage. So, uh, let's see. Actually, we're going to do full defense. Now, let's see. The brain focuses on defense. They add a plus ten percent to to their block block dodge or parry skill uh, for uh, until the next round till the next round. So block or we'll do block or dodge. I'm gonna make that a five percent bonus. Actually, no, ten percent is good. Ten percent actually has a meaningful amount. So okay, so what else were you literally looking at here? Let's actually look. Let's let's take a look. Let's actually move. We need to move. Move. The branded uh, moves back. Moves front, moves one one line in any one line in any direction. Front uh, front to back, back to retreat, back to retreat. Actually, it's maybe front dash back dash retreat. So, if you're in the front line, you can move to the back line. If you're in the back line, you can move to the front line or the retreat line. If you're in the retreat line, you can move to the back line. That's kind of, that's the basic idea of it. Not exactly the most complicated thing in the world, but doesn't really need to be that complicated. Okay. This is where things get a little bit trickier. So we're going to need to, so these are just going to be our basic ones. This is our absolute basic, basic bitch shit. Absolute basic bitch. Probably going to have to fix this up, but we're just going to do this for right now.
uh, let me see. What, what else would we need? What else do we need? What else do we need? What else do we need? Actually, what we can do... To their block. Now, if we really want to be A's, what we do is... They add plus 10 to that, to their dodge skill. To their dodge skill. So you have to anticipate what the enemy is actually going to throw at you, because there's going to be some moves that are unblockable and some moves which are undodgeable. So, let's think, everyone. Let's just take a, take a moment to think. What would be some more things to think about. Well, well, obviously, we have a lot, like, let's actually scroll up. Let's, let's look at the skills real fast. Uh, let me just go all the way up. Give me all the skills. Let's actually do what we, what we can do. Okay, so we're going to be able to, let's just say, uh, use skill. Uh, the branded uses a skill in their collection. Uh, uses a skill in their repertoire to gain information, gain information, or interact or interact with the environment. Uh, why are there two sets of defense skills here? Need that no away. Knowledge. So yeah, this is using knowledge. Uh, which we're actually going to say... Tactical advantage. Branded uses the tactics, or rolls the tactics skill. Rolls the tactics skill. I'll roll tactics skill. If successful... If successful... All ally, all, all allies gain a plus two to their initiative. Initiative next round. Uh, next round. Duh. Steal something off. Uh, steal something off of the enemy. They will roll the larceny skill. They'll roll the larceny skill. If successful, if successful, they may find a tool. They may find a tool. They may find it. They may find a tool or other useful object. Useful objects on their person. Person. Um. That's the general one. This is like a specific one. This is a specific one. Anything else specific here? No. Uh, actually, we'll put in like the use item. So the branded uses in equipped item. Uh, let's see, the branded uses an equipped item. Resolving its, effect, its effects. Its effects immediately. Uh, actually. Analyze, analyze the branded rolls the appropriate lore. Oh, pre, the appropriate lore rolls the appropriate lore. They are successful. If they are successful, they will learn about. They will learn about one or two. They learn about the enemy. Uh, they will learn about aspects. Aspects of the enemy they are analyzing. They are analyzing, including their, including their uh, HP, including their HP, and one attack. That's why demon lore is very good because you can learn their fucking attacks. Magic skills, cool. 
Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call this... We're going to call this Utility Magics. Utility Magic. Uh, the branded rule... Oh, uh, rolls a magic skill check. Magic skill check. For what's... Uh, magic skill check. Resolving a minor... Of, resolving a minor effect with ease. One FP may be spent... May be spent to enhance the effect. Enhance the effect... The effect as well. I want to use my fire magic to light the torch. That's not going to cost anything. I want to use my fire magic to light something he has on his back on fire. I'm not attacking him necessarily. I'm not shooting a little, I'm not shooting a frizz at him. What I'm doing is saying, I want to hit his thing on his back and snap and have it, you know, pop. That's utility magic. Uh, healing mat. Okay, uh, heal. Heal. The branded use oh rolls a healing healing magic skill check. Ja healing magic skill check. Uh, targeting a. Uh, targeting an al targeting an ally. Uh, targeting a. Uh, combatant. See, the branded rules a healing skill check targeting a combatant. Uh, they will restore. Uh, if success, if successful, they will heal. Equal to the combined roll, uh, combined roll of the check, of the check. Okay, uh, protection magic is a little bit weird. But we're going to do it. So protect. Shield. The branded rules a protection magic. Protection magic skill check. If successful, they will have a shield. They will have a shield. A shield with HP equal to the equal to the combined roll of the skill check. So, for example, I want to cast heal on you. I'm, we're casting protect. I want to make sure that you're going to get a little shield. I'm going to roll, and I succeeded with 23. You're going to have a five HP shield. Like it's going to hit the shield. You're going to get a little bit of HP. Um, let's see, is there anything else here? Drain magic. Uh, drain. I might put a little bit more detail for all the various magics. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Physical skills. Any of these physical skills, universally good. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, sneak. Brand rules is still skill check. If successful, if successful, they have slipped away. All right, get some sleep. It's late. Oh, they have slipped away. They have slipped away from sight. Next attack they perform. We'll deal plus one d six. We'll say plus one d six damage. You're just pretty much making us. You make a sneak check to do a little bit extra damage. Uh. Detective. But until they are revealed, they are revealed by being attacked, being attacked or having an effect, having an effect on them, they are unable to be seen. They are unable to be targeted. If you stand in the place where they're going to get hit by a fucking fireball and everyone in the front row is going to get damaged, and you're standing in the front row, you're going to get hit. You're being attacked. Your stealth is broken. Um, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Uh, social skills, which we're going to do. Uh, talk it out. Talk with the enemy. Uh, attempts to reason with or talk with the enemy. 
if necess if necessary, roll the appropriate. I roll the appropriate skill check. Okay. Uh, it's bullshit. That's fine. Memory, sixth sense. Okay, weapon skills. These are pretty standard. Open skill cap. Very simple stuff. Okay, we, we again, we're just we're kind of throwing shit at the wall right now, but that's fine. We're throwing as many actions and stuff what we can for not this, not this at all. Because this is what he would want to put in. You'd want to put in everything he can. Oh, uh, which we're going to put in a big old note right here. Uh, I had a fucking stroke. What's going on? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? What am I thinking? A enemy. Defending against attacks. When the en when the enemy is attacking attacking the branded, they they will need to defend themselves. They'll need to defend themselves. The brand the brand the branded has five options has five options for uh, attempting to prevent uh, to prevent damage toward them dot which is going to be block the branded attempts uh, attempts to block the attack block the attack with a with a weapon or with a weapon or shield uh, the block attempt. Okay, um, the block attempt, let's say the block attempt does not break combos, does not break combos. Actually, yeah. If, if success, if successful, uh, the branded will take no damage. We'll take no we'll take no damage but if they fail if they fail they will take uh they will take only half damage don't take only half uh, actually no if successful the brand will take no damage if they if successful the brand will take no damage from the from the from the attack blocking does not break combos not break combo strikes Does not play combo strikes, and there's still going to be some things which are not going to let you do it. Dodge, uh, the branded attempts to dodge the attack. The attack with a deft move, with a deft movement, with a deft movement, or a tactical reposition. If successful. The branded will take will take no damage from the from the attack. Dodging does not break combo does not break combo strikes. Parry. The brand the branded attempts to parry. Parry the attack with an equipped weapon. With an equipped melee weapon. Then equip melee weapon. If successful, the branded will take no damage from the attack, and the enemy will be considered st and the enemy will be staggered. Parrying does break combo strikes. Ward. Uh, the branded attempts to ward. Ward a magical a magical attack. Ward a magical attack by spending one FP. If successful, if successful, 
the branded will take will take no damage damage from the magical attack from the mat well take no damage from the magical attack Lord does not break com uh, does not break combo strikes so what do I mean by a combo strike I keep saying that but what do I mean by it well, combo strikes are actually fairly simple. Someone may have, let's say, let's say that's Skeleton Knight again. He may have an attack which is going to be sword, you know, it's going to be sword strike, 3d6, and he's going to be able to do that twice, and then a sword thrust, sword thrust for 4d6. That is his combo that turn. What's he, what he's going to do, he's going to do a sword strike twice. Then at the end, he's going to sword thrust for 40 sit. That's what he's going to try to do. He's going to go swing, swing, thrust. At most, you're going to be taking 86 damage. But that's where dodging and blocking comes in handy. Because what that means is... You can say, I want to dodge the swords, dodge both of the sword strikes. Let's say you have a 40% on your dodge. Well, all right, it's 40% on your dodge, and you rolled a, if I can fucking roll, come on, roll, roll well for one, please, please roll well. Let's say you roll a 12, you dodge the first strike, you need to dodge the second one. You know, roll, and you're rolling, and you rolled a fail. You got hit by it, and since it doesn't break it, you get hit, and then you get the sword thrust. It's kind of that thing of you being kind of comboed a little bit. That's why things like full defense are so valuable, because you can stack up and make sure you don't get hit. And But you're going to get hurt. You're going to get stabbed, and you're going to die. And that's why you know, having so much damage is so important. But that's why parrying is also very important. Because if you can parry the first attack, he's not going to do any of the others. He can't. You broke the strike. That's why parrying is very, very useful. Parrying saves lives. Well, and we're going to do, um, what would be the, what do I want to call it? Which we're going to call, um, ah, Dur. Brandon, take, uh, takes the hit. Uh, it takes the, the takes the hit, but tries to shake it. Uh, but tries to shake it off. Uh, they will, they will roll. They will roll a check for this. Actually, they will roll a res check. If successful, if successful, they will take half damage. They will take half damage. If they fail, if they fail, they will take full damage. So, for example, Emrin here does not want to do this. Emrin never wants to die, never wants to endure, because he needs to roll under a 4 with a 2d6. Which is not really good. But the entire idea for endure is, like, I have a stupidly high resilience rating, and I, or I have, like, a really high you know, uh, like physical resistance skill, you know, uh, physical defense, I mean. So, um, no, I am going to use, I'm going to reduce this damage by my endure value, and then I'm going to reduce it by this. So, okay, I'm, I've kind of survived a pretty big hit by just powering through it. I've gritted my teeth and I've, you know, survived. Uh, we're going to do that. Defending against attacks, what we're going to do is selecting three. So we have actions in combat. Uh, attacking, moving, and okay. I actually feel pretty good right now. Again, it doesn't seem like we did a lot, and we really didn't, all things considering. But we did do quite a bit. I'm going to call it here for today. Because it's like 11. But tomorrow we're going to be working on Metal Saviors, and hopefully on Monday, I'm going to clean this section up. I'm going to add some more bits, and we can start working on talents a bit more formally then. Once talents are done, we're, 
we're on easy street pretty much. Because what this is, is we're done with skills. Uh, we're done with the adventure phase, but again, I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit. Just kind of like explain it a bit more. And we're done with the combat. And we're going to try to finish up the combat phase. Uh, let me see. I want to do format text. Strike through. Climax phase. And then we just have to do all of this. But yeah, I want to get this section. Like I needed to get this section done just so I could do the talents more. Because I can do the talents now, I can add in these things to allow people to do other things. Which reminds me, I need to add a... I uh, use, uh, use talent. Use talent. Uh, the branded uses a talent they have acquired from their class. They have uses a talent they've acquired from their class. Uh, resolving its effects. Resolving its effects and resolving its and paying it paying its cost. There we go. So Thank you all for watching. My name is Notepad Anon. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Tomorrow we're going to be working on Metal Saviors. And probably there's going to be a stream on Sunday. I don't know what we're going to be doing on Sunday though. So, uh, outside of that, next week we're going to be starting a lot more formally on a lot of stuff stuff. Uh, which, hopefully we're going to actually finish this up. My goal is to get this done by next Friday. I'm aiming for about five, six episodes, depending on how things go. I'm feeling confident, but... It kind of depends on the moment. So, thank you all for watching. Goodbye. Have a wonderful rest of your night.